Nintendo sure loves to experiment when it comes to hardware. Instead of innovating in conventional ways, they gotta get weird and do stuff nobody else is really doing. Sometimes these efforts flop or are short-lived, but other times they turn into money-printing machines. Some of these weirder attempts at making something interesting would even make a comeback when the tech got better. The Virtual Boy, for example. It was certainly an ambitious idea, but they just didn't have the proper technology to back it at the time. Nintendo Switch VR, on the other hand, is a neat little add-on that accompanies existing games. Not only does it obviously function better with the modern hardware, but it not being the core center and purpose of the platform sort of made it a lot more accessible. Instead of being a dedicated machine, it's something neat you can try on the side if you already own the device in question. That's kind of the thing with these sorts of ideas. While in its infancy, it's something that's difficult to make an entire game surrounding, so it kind of works better as a side dish, a snack in the fridge that's otherwise filled with full-course meals. The 3DS's augmented reality capability abilities falls precisely into that category. It was one of those weird things the system could do, but it'd be difficult to imagine how you'd make an entire game with it, so it was instead limited to mini-games included either on the system or in a game side mode. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember those AR cards the 3DS came with. It's one of those things everybody plays with once, goes, yeah, that was kinda neat, and never really touches ever again. Even that giant one that came as a Club Nintendo reward all those years back was only kinda cool for like two seconds. Hey kids, you want to take a low-res blurry picture with a big 3D model of Mario, I guess? Cool. Kid Icarus Uprising even had an AR mini game with its own dedicated trading card series that never really took off. Jeez, does anybody remember these? I used to see them at the desk whenever I was at EB Games and nobody would ever buy them. What a weird time. But of course, this wouldn't be enough for Nintendo. Since they now had their grubby plumber hands on the Fatal Fame property, they had the perfect IP to try it out with. I mean, think about it. It was a game about taking pictures of ghosts. This concept of looking through the lens of a camera to see things you normally can't? It sounds like an idea that was always meant for this sort of thing. The resulting game was Spirit Camera, a spin-off of the Fatal Frame series for 3DS. While most games only had augmented reality in just a side mode, here was a game that revolved around the idea entirely. I used to see this game at Toys R Us and Best Buy every single time I'd go in. It seems like nobody was buying it, and after the game was slammed by negative reviews, I imagine it gathered a pretty foul reputation as a poorly functioning pile of gimmicks. Some of these reviews even went as far as to say that the game was flat out broken, saying it barely even worked. I used to see people saying stuff like that every now and then, and from my experience when people make those claims, it's sometimes because they're doing something wrong rather than the product actually being at fault. Skyward Sword's a pretty good example of this. All of those claims that the motion controls did not work turned out to be isolated instances that all stemmed from them not having a sensor bar set up properly. And yes, it does use the Wii Motion Plus and can operate independently from the sensor bar, but it was still used to calibrate you back to a proper center which solved drifting issues. You might not even know it, but not having that thing set up properly was the reason some people had problems. I always try my best to understand hardware and its limitations and recognize when I could be doing something differently to get it functioning properly before I tell people it's outright busted. I mean, sometimes games are legitimately broken, that does happen, but you have to make sure that's really the case before you come off as a big doo-doo head. So with that said, I'm genuinely curious to see if this thing really is broken or not. If so, how broken? If not, what it even is? Let's give this a try. The menu opens up to three options, Fatal Frame, Haunted Visions, and Cursed Pages. Weird how they don't have Fatal Frame in the main title, yet they still have it in the game somewhere. This is the main story mode, so I guess we'll start here. First thing the game wants me to do is take a picture of myself. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, that works. Why not? Then we get a CG cutscene of somebody walking through a spooky mansion with some narration. It's explained that there's a book called The Diary of Faces. If words appear on the blank page and you read them, then your face will be stolen! <laughs> the setup is super cheesy. While other Fatal Frame games build up to a curse and explore a failed ritual that caused it, here we have a haunted book that steals your face. And that book is actually included with the game. This small tattered booklet full of illustrations and aged photographs, it's of surprisingly high quality, and I admire the consistency. There's no words or copyright logos or fine print anywhere on it. There's nothing here that'll take you out of the idea of it actually being the book from the game. Well, maybe the staples in the back, but what can you do? They gotta keep it together somehow. This isn't just a fun bonus either. This booklet is actually used to play the game. You set it down on a nice and flat surface, and by using the 3DS's camera, you'll interact with the booklet in a number of ways. First thing we do is aim it at that blank page. Uh-oh, there's those words. Oh no, I read them. Oh. <laughs> oh 
Oh no, they stole my face. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm cursed, bro. <laughs> We then get to look around this 3D environment. This part's actually pretty cool. The atmosphere here is fairly decent, but it is very short-lived before the game goes back to using a camera. Soon afterwards, we meet this ghost woman named Maya. She claims that she was trapped inside that house before we let her out, and warns us of an evil spirit called the Woman in Black who steals people's faces. This is where the game's main dynamic is introduced. You'll switch between talking to Maya, flipping through the book to play minigames, and then battling ghosts. Many points in the game will have you flipping to a corresponding page and lining up the camera so a 3D object can emerge from it. It's a pretty neat effect, though I did have a really hard time getting this one here to work. This big hand comes out and you have to take pictures of it to exercise it, but it floats too far away from the book, so you can't look at it without looking away from the book and the AR points are no longer in frame. After a while, I figured out you had to rotate the book to set up the angle properly, but it was still kind of a pain in the ass. Any other time I had trouble getting it to work was merely a result of the book not having enough light. I was a bit skeptic of the critics when reading through those reviews, but it turns out most of those complaints were actually pretty valid. I'd say the only mission that's probably outright broken is the hand one. That's the only one I had a lot of trouble getting to work. But otherwise, all of those complaints about needing tons and tons of light to get this thing to work, completely true. So, sometimes the critics are just spitting facts. See, the camera on the 3DS is not very good, and crummy cameras need a lot more light to work properly, so you gotta play this game in a well-lit room. And I mean well-lit, you need a lot of light to make this thing work, which kind of destroys the whole atmosphere the game's going for. Battling evil spirits in a dark spooky mansion is pretty freaky, but battling them in your brightly lit bedroom just doesn't really have the same effect. There's some mini games you'll have to play with the book throughout the story, like playing hide and seek with this kid. Uh, he'll give you a hint and you'll have to figure out which page he's hiding in. There's also this memory game where you gotta watch these masks all look at each other, then you gotta pick which one had the most eyes on it, or which one had nobody looking at it, and etc. There's also some points where you'll unlock these alternate lenses, but instead of being used for power-ups like in the previous games, they're instead used to solve certain puzzles, but there's really nothing to it. Instead of like recognizing a situation and going, oh, maybe I need this lens for it, the game just straight up tells you which one to put on, then you just look at the book with it and that's it. After you do stuff with the AR booklet, you'll then have to fight a ghost. They try to create this illusion that these things are in the room with you, including Maya, but it's really not hard to break that illusion, since the 3DS can only detect tilt and rotation and has no way of tracking the actual 3D positioning of the system. In fact, the backdrop really doesn't matter at all. You can put a piece of tape over the camera for any parts that don't require the booklet and it plays exactly the same. It's just there to communicate this idea of the ghost being in the room with you. Which, yeah, is a pretty fun idea, but does it have any legitimate scare potential? Not really. It just comes off as schlocky and goofy more so than anything. I get that the idea here is your 3DS is a camera obscura, which lets you see things you normally can't, so while your human eyeballs can't see the ghosts in your room, the 3DS can, implying they're really there in some sense, but you'd really have to suspend your disbelief to get into that mindset. I guess the developers imagine people playing the game like this. <laughs> Sorry guys, but the reality is closer to this. <laughs> The combat here is definitely what you'd expect from a Fatal Frame game. You aim at the ghost, charge up your shot, and snap the picture when the cursor turns red to deal maximum damage. Anybody that's played Ocarina on 3DS knows exactly how accurate aiming with that gyroscope can be. I mean, look at this. Boom, boom, boom. Easy. This, of course, applies to Spear Camera as well. Keeping the cursor over the ghost has never been easier, at least without the use of a lock-on. It actually feels pretty good. The game runs a bit faster than the camera's able to keep up with, though, which does feel feel a bit disjointed. Having the camera lag a fraction of a second behind the spirit you're battling is a tad jarring. Each and every ghost will behave quite differently, which was something I did like a lot. Every battle felt totally different, which kept the combat reasonably fresh. There's not very many ghosts in total though, in fact there's only five. Well, six if you count the final boss as two phases, but even still, that's barely anything. The story mode only took me two hours to get through, and even then, most of it was bloated with all these talking scenes with Maya. She talks a lot, but she never really manages to say that much. She kind of just slowly recaps all of the details that you yourself probably already noticed about the ghost you just fought. There's a pretty dumb plot twist where it turns out that she's actually the woman in black. Like, her spirit was split into two or something, like a good side 
in an evil side? I don't know. Uh, this was a result of, lo and behold, a failed ritual where some old woman tried to, like, stab out her eyes. So now she's getting revenge by stabbing out other people's eyes and taking their faces or whatever. The final battle actually takes place in a proper 3D space instead of using whatever the camera's looking at for a backdrop. And I kind of hate to say it because it sort of defeats the entire game's gimmick, but this actually feels a lot better. The background no longer feels so disjointed from the ghost. Not only is it the same graphics as it for once, but it also kind of runs at the same speed and frame rate too. You know what? Playing the game like this sort of made me want a proper Fatal Frame game on 3DS. Revelations did a great job of making a 3DS Resident Evil game, so I could have seen a full Fatal Frame game working on the platform too. But instead, they made this super short experiment, and it is kinda neat, I guess, like the combat works fine, the AR booklet stuff works reasonably well if you're in the right environment for it, and it is kinda cool, it was cool to try these things at least once, but, you know, being short probably kinda works in its favor in the end, because the novelty wears thin fast. If this thing were any longer, I probably would have lost interest in the gimmicks halfway through. The problem here was in the price. They charged a full $40 for this. That was the price of a new 3DS game at the time, and when you're getting so little out of it, that's pretty absurd. It should have been $10, a cool little thing to check out at a cheap price. Well, I guess there is some extra stuff. After beating the story mode, you unlock extra story mode. It's the same exact thing, except the ghosts are now slightly harder and Maya wears a different costume. It's not really different enough to warrant a second playthrough. There's also a battle mode where you can refight each the ghosts, and if you beat them all on Nightmare difficulty, you even unlock a Princess Peach costume for Maya. That's kind of cool. It's nice to see them meet the fun Nintendo costume quota. Though you can only see this in the model viewer, you can't actually use it in the story mode, so what's the point? Well, that's all done. I guess all that's left is the side stuff. Okay, let's take a look at Haunted Visions first. It's a series of side things involving taking pictures. Okay, first off, we got Spirit Photography. You take pictures, and there's a random chance a ghost will appear in it. That's literally it. You just take a picture and sometimes they add a ghost to it. Alright, what do we got next? Uh, spirit check. You take a picture of somebody and the game tells you what spirit is haunting them. So, sort of like a horoscope, I guess? Let's see what I got. Oh, I'm, I'm the pained man. Oh, I'm in pain. Oh. Let's try this jackass. Oh, the, vi the violent man. Stay away from it, dude. Guys, he'll fight you. He's violent. Alright, Goku, what do we got? The woman in the mirror. You obsess over your appearance. That is the least Goku thing I've ever heard. Okay, lastly, there's Spirit Challenge. You take a picture of somebody's face and it slaps it onto a ghost. Sort of like Face Raiders, I guess. It even generates some stats based on the person's face. Uh, not sure how that works. Apparently, my friend Robbie here is super strong and fast. Not much health, though. You'll then have to battle a ghost that has those stats, but it's kind of hilarious having something that looks like this coming at you. It doesn't even have to be a person. You can take a picture of anything. Honestly, I think this mode is the most fun I've had with this game just because of how dumb it is. Well, that's all of those ones, I guess, Next up, we have the Cursed Pages section. These are all the mini games that use the AR booklet. The first one's just that mask memory game from the story mode, except with more unlockable difficulties. Next up, we got another memory game where you have to remember which doll appeared in the book and find the correct one. Next up, we have that hide and seek game from the story mode, but again with more unlockable difficulties. And lastly, we have this on rails game where you gotta walk through a mansion and snap as many pictures of ghosts as you can, sort of like a rail shooter. This one's actually pretty fun, and again, actually being in a 3D rendered environment instead of just using a camera, it feels a lot smoother and kind of just makes me want to play a real Fatal Frame game. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot here. Half of it is just lifted from the story mode, so I guess if you wanted more of that, there's those extra difficulties. And that is everything there is to Spirit Camera. There is really not much here. Doing absolutely everything, including the bonus stuff and refighting the Ghost of Nightmare difficulty, only took me about four and a half hours. It is ridiculously short, even with the bonus stuff. Some of this stuff is kind of neat, and the short length probably does work in its favor considering it's only cool for a little bit, but there's no way they could have justified that price tag back then. But luckily, it's not back then. It's now. And now, it's not too hard to find this game for a reasonably cheap price, so if you're a big Fatal Frame fan and you're interested in trying that one weird thing they tried on 3DS that one time, it's a harmless venture. If you find it at a pawn shop for like 5 bucks or something, I'd say why not? Check it out. It's a cool thing to try at least once. Uh, just make sure you get that AR booklet with it because otherwise you can't really play it. But this only marks the beginning of Fatal Frame's march into weirder and more experimental territory. Next up we have Fatal Frame 
Maiden of Black Water on the Wii U. I forgot what the subtitle was. Uh, I also have to hold up the gamepad because we didn't have a physical game here, so I, yeah, digital only. What can you do? This will be the last one we check out next time. I'll see you guys on Halloween, hopefully, maybe early November. I don't know when this is going to come out. See ya. Then, bye!